Welcome back to this episode of Bearcat Chats. And on this Martin Luther King Jr. Day, it is a pleasure to be joined by Binghamton University's first ever Vice President for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, Karen Jones. Karen, thanks so much for joining me. Thank you, Jacob, for sending the invitation. It's a pleasure to be here. Of course. Karen, on this MLK Day, uh, we're in extraordinarily challenging times. What's your message to students, many of whom are back in the Binghamton community and others that will soon be back on campus? I think my message, uh, not only for students, but for faculty and staff is, you know, let's use this moment to engage with one another in ways perhaps that we haven't um, had in the past. Um, to take time to hear one another, to listen, um, but most importantly, um, to be respectful of diverse um, perspectives and conversations and positions. And we were talking uh, just a few moments ago off air. It's easy to see the pandemic. Obviously, it's affected our lives in drastic ways, but you say it provides more opportunities. Yeah, so I think oftentimes, you know, particularly when we think about the delivery of curriculum, instruction, engagement, um, who would have thought that we would be hosting virtual meetings through Zoom, right? And so if you had said years ago, um, or at least even a year ago, um, that we will uh, minimize um in-person meetings, in-person interviews, I would have been like, yeah, no, people would much rather prefer, you know, being in the physical presence of one another. And so out of challenges comes opportunities um, to stretch our imagination, to identify new ways of of operating. Um, And so in years past, you would have thought about you know, how do we host a conference? And so naturally speaking, it's like, okay, planes, trains, and automobiles, right? (laughs) But now we're looking at virtual conferences um, as another medium to convey material. Um, There's also social media as it relates to Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, and other modes of communicating Um, that folks are now enhancing in ways that they weren't um, previously. And so when you think about creating opportunities, um, you know, if you've never taught online, by this point in time, you're probably an expert, right? If you've never engaged in conducting an interview by Zoom, you're probably well apt at doing that now. And so again, um, oftentimes we think about, oh my gosh, you know, how am I going to function? And so it's just human nature. And we've seen through, um, even with Martin Luther King and the way that he was able to pull folks together across the country, um, it creates opportunity for us to reimagine the work that we're doing and the ways in which we can engage with one another. And in reading about your background, I mean, you are so student-centered. You know, this is not an ivory I'm always student-centered. Program. I'm right. always student-centered. Yeah. Right. And that it's hard to replicate that saying hello to somebody uh, in a hallway or outside on the quad. How do you capture, how do you create those relationships with students, as you say, through two dimensions? Yeah, so it's it's new. And so generally speaking, you know, I would have attended new student orientation, would have attended the cultural groups orientations in, um, you know, physical presence. But now we're doing that through Zoom. And so one of the things that I've shared with some of the students I've met thus far is, you know, when you're hosting um, or have a position of a cabinet level, generally speaking, there's a campus forum, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, Where students are engaged, where the campus community is engaged. Um, And so because that wasn't um, as robust as we generally would have had it, one of the things I made certain to do was to extend invitations to the presidents of the student cultural gloves to introduce myself, to identify the ways in which we could partner on programs, 
but most importantly, to convey a message that I'm here for you and that you can use my office as a liaison to help in expressing your concerns, identifying um, opportunity for um, continued improvement. And so again, it's doing things differently that perhaps we wouldn't have thought about last year. Um, and so it's, you know, making certain that even though I'm someone who enjoys, you know, like, hi, you know, so used to hugging students, if you right. will, um, that it's like, how do you create that sense of warmthness through two dimensional um, venues? And so again, it's hoping that my personality um, the fact that I am student-centered, so regardless of the roles that I've had in higher education or in corporate, there's always this um, value of making certain that the work that we did partnered with the high school communities, the college communities, because if you think about it, it's all cyclical, right? Mm -hmm. And so if high school students aren't graduating, they're not going to be our students um, in, at the university or the college. Um, and generally speaking, if they're not graduating from high school, they're not going to college, they're not going to be employed in the corporate sector. And so again, stressing the importance of education, of community engagement um, is something that has always been near and dear to me because I realized that you know, I've had opportunities that who would have imagined? Um, and so I think it's important to create those avenues of access for others, similar to the ways in which, you know, Martin Luther King says, you know, that we're trying to create a better place. And how else can you do that except to think about it in its totality? So our public school systems, our college systems, our healthcare systems, our corporate sectors, all of these were all entangled with one another, if you will, and benefit from each other's success. And at the same time, there's a responsibility to make certain that each sector um, is doing the best that we can and it's incumbent upon us as community members to contribute to that success. And I know you have had family in the New York area and are very familiar with the state, but in this now, I guess it's month seven or month eight of being on the job and getting to know the Binghamton community. How has that shaped your goals and the initiatives you want to start to implement for the coming year? Yeah, and so again, my role has always been, regardless of where I am, to make certain that the community understands who we are as an organization, to get their sense of, you know, can you talk about the ways in which you partner with the community? Here's uh, we've got a barrage of expertise, if you will, on campus. Um, and so I've reached out to some of those um, organizations, our nonprofit organizations like the YWCA, uh, the Urban League, um, our healthcare systems, um, our community foundation, because again, it's how do I make certain that these partnerships that we have are beneficial to our students. So internships, making certain that they understand that our students are the best in the country for their respective content area. So again, talking about, you know, the ways in which we can partner in terms of diversity initiatives, but most importantly, how it is that the relationship can benefit our students in terms of employment. Um, but and the other aspect is recognizing that the faculty and staff that we have are superb. They're experts in their respective field. Um, and so again, making certain that that relationship is strong so that when they're looking for um, expert opinion, when they're looking for students to engage, when they have employment opportunities available, that Binghamton University is the first place that they look to. And so more recently, um, I've been having conversations with fellow or former employees at Excellus Blue Cross Blue Shield to talk about, okay, we can partner with diversity initiatives, but I'm going to hold you accountable for making certain that our students get internship opportunities, that our students have an opportunity for successful employment, because it's all about how do we help our students to be successful 
once they leave here. And how about, especially in this virtual climate, um, retaining diverse faculty and staff? Uh, I know there's, as you've talked about, a lot of competition for teachers and professors. There is, and so I think this is a, it's a national conversation. And so one of the things that we've done, particularly realizing that everyone's competing for the same talent. So how do we make certain that even in the sense that our numbers may not reflect our, our capacity or reflect the work that we've done, how do we make certain that all faculty understand the importance of inclusive pedagogy? So this semester or last semester, we partnered with the provost's office to provide inclusive pedagogy series to every new faculty member to help them to understand, you know, how do you make certain that there's equity in your syllabus? How do you make certain that your your um, pedagogy is inclusive in the ways in which you reach and teach your students, right? And so that's one area. The other thing that we're also working towards is making certain that our onboarding experience helps all new employees to understand who we are as an institution, that we value diversity, and that our students have a right to be respected. That's not to say that they haven't been respected, but what does that look like? And so it's almost like having a conversation with my friends where they're like, oh my gosh, you know, my kids won't do this. They're, they're not operating in the way that I think they should. And so I've had had conversations with my friends to say, hey, <laughs> you know, we're 50 something, right? And your kids to have the same perspective that you do at 19 and 18 and we're at 50. So the experience, the level of maturity, the processing of information is not going to be the same because they don't have that time <laughs> that we have. So let's help our youth um, to be who they are, to create stretch opportunities, but also, you know, college is the place, in my opinion, where you should be able to make mistakes and you're forgiven easily, right? And so it's like the mistakes I made at 18, <laughs> I shouldn't be making them at 50. But here is the fertile ground where we're able to stretch their imagination, to stretch the experience, some of which is going to be uncomfortable. But from uncomfortability comes growth, similar to, you know, we're, no one's loving COVID, right? No, I don't know. But we're, we're, we're allowing this experience to create other opportunities for us. And that's the same way that I think uh, most folks will approach student development. Uh, but again, when you're talking about students and how do you keep them, it's the relationship is always important, creating community for them. Um, and in many instances, they're leaving home, they're coming here, their parents are have the expectations that we're safeguarding their interests, that we're committed to the mission of the institution, which is to create an opportunity for our students to be successful, whether they're in their local communities or from a global perspective. And so that's the work that I value. Well, Karen Jones, we're happy to have you on our team and really, again, a pleasure to have you on and excited uh, for the work that's to come. And uh, Yeah, I'm excited to be here. And it's been a wonderful, uh, almost seven months. <laughs> yeah, the almost seven month anniversary coming up. Thanks, Karen.